Yes, what is it? Hi again, gendarme. Bye bye, gendarme.
Looks like the circus left him, but the clowns are still here. As you look around this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco, does this look familiar? You believe the place was called Precinct 41. It was also filled with, almost exclusively, men, sitting on desks, talking shit and wasting time. Huh? You got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. Speak for yourself, buddy. I've been running this outfit for ten years now. You should have seen Martinez before it started. It was like jam rock now. They didn't see shit, man. Kids getting shot. We had three shootings a week. Fucking graffiti everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffiti removal. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. Don't let him drink that. One more push, quick. Titus? She stops mid-sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up, but on his terms. You wanna help her, cop? Fine. I'm gonna let you help her, but you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her, a freight train of pain, buddy. What is her name? Clausia, I'm on you. She's staying here at the Whirling in Rags. A real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit. Blonde. That's I'm on you. With an O. U. Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs? That can't be her. She knows you drank so hard you forgot you were a cop. Sure. Why not? You've probably seen her around. You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, but no one notices. Your spine is too damn straight. None of these people would ever suspect you've met her. Calm. Normal. Try to forget this little hiccup. You don't know her. Good boy. He did it before we killed him. He's not gonna do it again. So what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. All right. Two weeks, maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. Here you go, boss. Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's their relationship. Something is off here. His anger is... Possessive. 
was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. Remember what I said. Freight train of pain. The door is closed. Who is it? Tired. Controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open. I'm drying my hair. Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. You catch a single white flower between your fingers. The rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. The young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand. Just a glance, then takes a drag of her cigarette. The lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. Welcome to the roof. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean, then toned over several years of self-defense training. You can sense it in the sharp pointing of her elbows. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. It's much nicer now. Where the dead body used to hang, clearly visible from the roof, but no longer. Thank you for that, officers. Truly. 
There is something in her light brown eyes, a sadness, when she thinks about the death of that man. Oh yes, legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. I know. That's probably also why the cleaning lady quit. I am Kim Kitsuragi. I am a detective from Precinct 57. I see you've already met my colleague. This does not come as good news to him. Have I ever? This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I have seen in my life. And I have seen a few. Oh yeah. Life gets hard, but we go on. The chorus of the 35 single, megaphone in the entire human race, instills you with the fuck it all swagger that prompts one to plow into grannies on your morning stroll. Oh, I've got a couple of good years left on my warranty. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Huh. I see. What could she be thinking of? It's hard to say. Her shoulders are relaxed, her eyes on the cigarette. It's like she's... Disappointed this wasn't about more entertaining matters. She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Because of the wind? Clausier Amondu. Same name that Titus gave you. It sounds Oranese, as does her accent. Her birthmarks also signal Oranye. You don't know why, but Oranese girls tend to come speckled with them. Right, sir. Vredefort, Republic of Oranye. I guess you could say I am an Oranese expatriate. Wasn't the tattoo on the hanged man an Oranese map of the waterways? The thought begins to form in your head, then dissipates. Something for later. I'm 28. Something stupid. Oranese lit. Oranese literature. It's what I studied at the university. Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Oranese. All national literatures are... Only the name of the nation changes. What about Revisholian literature? People sometimes reveal things about themselves when they discuss such matters. No. Revisholian lit is about how magnificent and serious Revisholian is. It's about how you have to save the world. That's the natural state of the Revisholian hero. She seems quite relaxed for a victim of assault. But, of course, what seems should not be your priority.
the record so official. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. The bills downstairs concur. Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? I heard this is where the washed up disco has bins go. I'm really not. Okay. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. It's a bit early in the morning for rate, isn't it? She sounds positively buoyant, vivacious, totally unbothered. Is it? It is afternoon. Time flies, man. Yeah... I'm gonna go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. By him, she must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapeable. Boy, they. She means the Hardy Boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know... hair? I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. They're frequent guests. Downstairs. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. There must be more to it. You should return to this topic after you've talked about her relationship with the deceased, maybe. Pretty much. Warming them. She must be very cold and exhausted of this life. He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines, and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. We partied. With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. Please, you're alive in 50. I've known people who party so hard they're dead at 14. What no one does on your level is hitting the repeat button. I'll give you that. 
and maybe room trashing. What did you do when you parted? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. Whoa. After so much drinking and drugs, how did they manage it? I guess you can say that, yes. A bit. Lovers is such an emotional word. But there was something there. We did enough drugs for there to be. How did you two meet? Downstairs. At the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. Oh yes. I've had a great view. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. You called us, DRCM. Yes. Jackpot. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Ravachot, miss. Because I couldn't handle it anymore. None of these people called. He just kept hanging there. Then they started stripping him. Tearing off his armor. Demeaning him. Throwing rocks at him. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. With nail clippers, and I diverted some radio fuzz into it, into the cold wire. So, she's God's mystery foam cutter. Did I? Fuck, I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. Jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Still, that's pretty clever tempering. Simple and clever. Crossing the lines like that. Thanks. She looks a bit like a little girl who's just been complimented on her bike repair skills. I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the Union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, you'd still be hanging there. I'm sorry, I can't do- I know it's- She meant she sees him in her dreams. You have? Not like I do, I imagine. She sees them in each other's arms. Yes. And then he's dead. His mouth agape. Agape. Ready to catch a bullet. A coincidence. Make a note and return to it later. 
She dips the cigarette in the lighter's flame and inhales, then looks at you with her lungs full of smoke. I can see the similarity, yes? Funny. Funny how? Nothing. I also saw him. We had a long inspection and that sort of thing sticks with you. Let's move on. Bullet? They shot him too? I'm not picking up on any theater craft here, sir. The pause is sincere. They stripped his clothes and they shot him? You mean after they hanged him? I'm confused, sorry. So am I. Were you aware that he had also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I thought he was hanged. I was not present when they did it. I don't know what happened. I just know what they told me and Sylvie, the bartender. This is beginning to get confusing for you too, and we don't like that. Where was she last Sunday night? Cowering. I was cowering downstairs with Sylvie. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. She nods. Silvery cigarette fumes disappear into her mouth. Soft, light brown eyes look back at you, directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. I have bad news for you. You know these guys? Who? Me? Yes, you. He's talking about you, you boring stiff. You too. Me? What did I do? I'm merely a master thespian. These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. You can't trust them anymore. I'm sorry I didn't catch it sooner. It takes conscious effort on your part. How it always does, through subtlety. There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. No. It's better to know you're being played than to be played without knowing it, is it not? You can't draw a sound conclusion. The one who usually does says, she may want to control the information rollout, not to become a suspect. She may have a past she's escaping, unrelated to this case. You doubt it's something truly insidious. See? It's oddly moderate, probably compromised. Yes. Mr. Thespian here has been singing pians to how truthful she is. She is a lady most fair and just. In his defense, to reduce him to such inadequacy, she probably had to employ half-truths more often than outright lies. That is correct. And omissions too. A little. They're all still of limited use interpreting things to the best of their ability. Maybe they add flair or something. I wouldn't know. I don't add flair. But when it comes to assessments of character and factual accuracy, 
They are not to be trusted. Not with her. Don't be melodramatic. You can trust them. Just not with her. There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume. All of them. Bullshit, man. I ain't compromised. Especially that guy. That guy's the most compromised one in here. No fucking way, man. I just want a drag of that sweet menthol Ziggy. Really? Quick, tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Glory, truth, softness, protect her. She wants you. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You've got this. The silence broken. She exhales a little cloud of smoke and says, God, no. Not my favorite topic. But okay. How about we, you know, not my favorite topic. Like I said, a little. Like your party? No. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? Yeah? I'm wintering. How long? It about four months. The bill's downstairs. Here in the Whirling? Here in... Because it's the funkiest building in Martinez. And because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. I'm winter. How long? About four months. The bill's down... Here in the Whirling? I always wanted to see the only city in the world in the worst time of the year. It's a tourist thing. This is by far not the only reason she's here. And she isn't really hiding it either. All right. Why not? I'll be here until 11 p.m. Drinking coffee, most likely. Six crumbling petals rest on your palm. They're white, a bell-shaped crown. This is the Insulindian lily, called Maybells or Lucille's Tears during the Revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. This flower is a spring flower, but it's a bit early for that, isn't it? The revolutionaries, so the commoners and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the suzerain's army so it held meaning for the Kingsmen, too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths, then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the Civil War. Yes, but not this early, not to my knowledge. It looks dried, preserved. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. The petals feel dry and fragile in your hand. Water flows under the channel bridge. Dark water. You rub your sides for warmth, but there is none. Inland, above the Martinez distributary, the channel that brought wastewater from the silk mills of Jamro, and then dead bodies during the war. The wrinkled fingers of an old man crush flower petals, then sprinkle them in the stream like white salt. Rene, that old man in the uniform. Maybe you should show it to him when you get the chance. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. 
I don't know, Lieutenant Euphrater. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton of composite support beams and cantilevers. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. I hate it when that happens. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Very sturdy. Must be something valuable inside to go through the trouble of protecting it. The door is very sturdy indeed. Same small, heavy. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. You kick it, gung ho style. Entering the premises style. But the door fails to respect the force. All you hear is the bar rattling inside, laughing at you. All right, let's trash the place. Let's not. Your foot is ready to explode and punish this object. The door receives a thorough disciplining, at the cost of your foot. Your foot hurts. A lot. Bent metal. Broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of F. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Kudos. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. So you said to her, what did you mean by it? She seemed forthcoming to me, unusually so. Being forthcoming with some things is a good way to obscure other things, but I wouldn't call myself compromised. I am not easily swayed by young women, but on the other hand, the best liars are candid, and she was candid. The lieutenant seems oddly sure he is not compromised, not psychologically at least. Is it hubris? Anyway, we should move. I suspect our investigation will bring us back soon enough.
This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Smooth as ice, there are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. Looks like it, yes. This window. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Pharmaceuticals line the shelves, sheet upon sheet of pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, APAP, eye drops, blood thinners. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol, histoperidol, something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads, Nacra. Nacra, this is used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Interesting. That's used for diamorphine overdoses. You could say he's on the lookout. Among some foreign, probably Mycenaean or Gottwaldian, Marked red blister packs you find. What do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. A bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it. In sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. It's speed, man. Just what you were looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine and talk about psychological disorders. But what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. Preptide, a euphemism for pharmaceutical amphetamine. Prescription speed. The fuck are you waiting for? Let's get super fucking preppy. This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs. Plus, and it's been used. This toothbrush belongs to someone who doesn't give a damn about her teeth. This medicine cab. Anything of note? This window. Hey, was there something you needed? I've got nothing to say to you. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? Again? Seriously, man. Yeah, what if? Fuck! I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. 
for the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. This is a diversion. Stay on track. She wasn't raped. The witness's statements were very clear. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. His hands become fists. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking hit you. Done. Titus Hardy. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Frankly, it's a bit terrifying. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters. A mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, radio officer. Yeah, like you have one, smart ass. Bear. We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop. All day, writing down what they say, it gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. They're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. What's on it? We call it the Dorgana Mega Mix. You know why. Won't. Now that is intriguing. You had me a door gunner. You don't care about evidence. The fuck are you a cop for then? Fix, T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. I'm sure we can find a tape player. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shut- Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. I'm sure we can find a tape player. It's not a problem. Your room had one. Or maybe it's too broken. 
Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Hardcore aesthetic. Oh yes, drugs. We're talking about drugs. Let's face it, these flirtations with the hardcore aesthetic have all been leading up to one question. Can I do drugs harder now that I'm a hard cop? And the answer is yes, you can. You can do one more blast of Pyrolidon and yellow shit powder. You can even pull a ciggy and a lager on top of that. There, you've truly made the hardcore your own thing now. just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. You push, command set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Revishar. 
This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. The harbor. That's the son of a Kvalsund crane. He's right. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. End of recording. It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Still. There's more going on here than we know. Corti could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. The South Safre conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safre. It has been hot for 12 years with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. Symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly. Inappropriate, even. Fuck, does Kuno care? Kuno doesn't fucking care! Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Still no word. I'm 57. In the cabin. Oh. 
sorry, officer. What do you want? René wasn't really what you'd call a botanist officer. And believe me, he didn't like insulindian lilies. Of course he didn't. Flowers are for pansies. Stop wasting time with them. Mm. That's their old name, dating back to the time of kings and crests, and all that other stuff he loved so much. There were many reasons, but mostly it was the communals. They called them the Bells of Revolution. I guess in the end, the Insulindian lilies were just another piece of the old Insulinde. The Royalists had to surrender to the Mazovian insurgents. It doesn't really matter anymore. Yes? What? Yes. He finds comfort in the thought. We all got to go. We are both very sorry for your loss. It is what it is. I just don't know anymore. About anything really. Officer, I just can't do this. Branches scrape the glass. ceiling height window. The hawthorn, there's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached a yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Huh? I'm not your janitor, cop. I don't even know what you're talking about. There's nothing there. If he says it's there, it's there. And I need the fatty to get his feet amputated because the smell is killing me. We can't always get what we want. God damn it, Dennis. You know I can't help it. Sorry, fucko. These guys won't help you. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit.
Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No, smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. Over there, in the corner. Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Lit. A phrase almost synonymous with the Insel Indian pinball scene. Any pinball scene, really. Great. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, Finger Boy. Those flippers are ready. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy taken on the world's toilet. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the pers The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy. It takes a while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. Go, go, finger boy. I feel sorry for the gods. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. A mask nationalist. An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining home, surrounded by a wall-mounted hunting trophy from every continent. He also hit his wife and kids, other people's kids too, sometimes pets, hateful little men. But you seem to be having fun. All these mesmerizing machines, just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. Some kind of inane pinball theme, probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. Deora was one of the three crown cities of the DeLorean era on the Muindi Isola. The others being Ria Silvia and at Vesperasket. This theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, pearl-laden women. It's quite nice, actually. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. 
Now, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. No. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. There are large rectangular buttons, Monter, Le Sonde, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. That it does. I say, let's brave it. No, it was maintained in 88 of the previous century. No, I think the bureaucrats just forgot about this backroom elevator after the revolution. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up, a long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardies bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means... Ah, yes, as the novelty dice makers said, this has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I... But then, it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Stupid superstition. But still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. It's not a ghost story. It's a curse, and Gart ought to be made knowledgeable so he could perform counterspells. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. This is good. He likes it. There's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. It was a stereo investigation after all. It has now converged with our main investigation, adding a new fact to consider. It means someone snuck through what seemed like a secret route, behind Classius' room, in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. La 
large prints, most likely made by Boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than Vamp. The souls have left the pattern uniform, horizontal lines. One person has been here. They've gone back and forth. The tips point both ways. This print is unlike one left by a regular worker boot. It is not a brand sole with logos on it. It seems custom made or old fashioned. Between that and that. The size looks about the same, actually. They are not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. No, these little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me, or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. If your mesolimbic reward pathway were to venture a guess, one of the bottles is probably being put somewhere it doesn't belong. This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. Unless we've veered off into a folded M dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Class here about this route. See how she reacts? Folded M dimension. A reference to the popular science fiction series, In System. Look who's in a good mood suddenly, and read science fiction. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. She puts her coffee cup down. With a soft ring, as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions. Only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. Mm, where did they get this recording, exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via a de-encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Then you didn't get the greatest hits, officers. It's probably for the best. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it co holly style? He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. 
would have been overkill anyway. He left his own little cohoy. It wasn't his everything. Yes, w was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living. Until they just... Sort of turn into his, um... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like the Semenes Conflict, the Kohoi Massacre, and the 36 Famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani's ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, Mr. Kohoi here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lely's dad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lely's dad. That's a good start. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Leilstad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive summary. Cows, silos, and wheat. Aranje? Aranje's map of waterways? This fits with his tattoo. You are almost right, officer. That means his race was occidental, not mondial. I'll update the form. Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranien Reik. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habits. Sex. Alcohol. Speed. Probably also Sildenafil. No love for Mother Oranje. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. A people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot.
Mm -hmm. There is nothing on Muindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranya did bring us together, in loathing. I love Ravishal, though. I hope she loves me, too. A column of air encircles her, brushing gently on the metallic silver fabric that covers her shoulders and her long, slender arms. It didn't love him. The feeling dissipates. The cold passes. The woman's eyes follow yours to the piece of notebook paper. He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. Points aren't good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. It isn't. Police work is a cooperative sport. There is no challenge without competition. There must be an opponent. This is clearly sports for him. Something like archery or darts. That's too conceptual for me. I'd just like to get autopsies correct on the first try if possible. Where were we? He's lying. Oh, that. Sure, service history. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranis lit? Yes. This is the very essence of Oranis lit. A moment's respite. Dark and hopeless is the struggle itself. He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. Oh yeah. No thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms. From a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Oranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishal and got killed himself. It is when you're high. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. A change of topic? It very well could be, yes. What do I mean? 
I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? That's not funny, officer. Her voice is like a slash through the air. Her shoulders tense up. There. She momentarily lost control over straight back guy. It appears that she feels guilty. Of course I do. I'm hungover. I feel guilty about everything. Do you feel guilty about what happened to him? Among many other things, yes. I could have done something. There's always something he can do, right? What is this? An interrogation? You didn't tell her this was going to be an interrogation. Yes. Light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies. It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. It's clear she was very much attracted to him, and still is. Of course. He was the most strangely beautiful man I've ever been with, and I mean that. And now, he's dead. A pity. Ah, oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made oily, not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. No. She tries to light another cigarette. It's windy, but she gets it done. A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. Hear that? Sildenafil. Just like you suspected. You have a great nose for this stuff. It's for maintaining an erection. Uppers are vasoconstrictors, so that feat becomes problematic. Because you're a scientist, of course. How much does the toxicology report cost the police of Revishal? I can do it for half of that. Save you some money, make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss, but we'll manage without your help for now. All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? Below the damage. The weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Huh? How old? Mm. 58? You asked. Actually, make that 54. 
alcoholism had severely impacted your appearance. And I was wrong about the age of the deceased. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. To the Ooh. laboratorium. I was just thinking. This window is... Hey, was there something you needed? Another thing. Great. I love those. What wall? I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the Whirling does not abide spying on its guests. The color has drained from his face. What a shame to fix such a good peephole. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about the establishment? I hope not. Oh, okay. Well, I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. He's really, really holding himself back here. It takes a lot of willpower not to ask. Obviously, he's been wanting to know what's behind the door. Okay, what is back there? Ha! I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here, too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. I was just wondering. If you found pinball machines there... He was wondering about something business-related, about how much money he could make of one. No, but we could diversify the entertainment options, seeing as you've opened the door back there. Well, the machine we have in the corner now is broken. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. He should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. Yes. Hey, was there something... Another thing? What? Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. So he knows of the doomed commercial area and its address. He's thought about this. Everyone knows of it. I've been working here for a long time, and that intercom has never been used by the Whirling.
It's a sign of the whirling in rags not being part of the doomed commercial area. If anything, we're revitalizing this neighborhood. Relax, Mr. Gart. I'm sure there is no doom. He simply wants to share his discoveries with you. Does this look like part of a doomed commercial area? This pre-revolutionary tilework, these high ceilings, the nice rooms, well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man, that's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me, some doom ghost. He's done a fine job too. Though he's spoken of the place dismissively before, the hostel is actually very important to him. Yeah, it, it's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way, especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way, even if it is part of the damn doomed commercial area. Yes, your police skills have delivered. I'm sure you'll get a commendation, maybe even a promotion. Well, it sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. It was you? You look surprised. What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names, too. It's from a song. Hail, Holy Queen, by the Ateniers. Hail, Holy Queen of the Sea. You're whirling in rags. You're vast and you're sad. Good pick. Some real estate management company. They never come around here, just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. What about them? One is a basement dive frequented by chain smoking communists. I can't tell you how sick I am of Kras Mazov and Ignis Nielsen and all those old ghosts. He's hesitating, not sure if he should share this information with you. Encourage him. The other is a kebab cart. It's very successful in its way, but it's nothing like the whirling. Luck has got nothing to do with it. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. Against the doom, it's implied. So, if you didn't have anything else to tell me about my establishment, can we, you know, wrap it up? Yes. Again? I can't believe this shit. Yes? Uh, what is it? The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? He tenses immediately, chest tightens, jaw sets, ready for another blow. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishal. I gave you gold on that tape. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Locker room talk. What are you, fucking brain dead? I've been to plenty of locker rooms. They don't plan rapes there. What did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Fucking whoop de doo
Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? Women are crazy. Irrational. That's what you're thinking, right? Also, your fists are itching for a bump. You can say that again, copper. Right here. Here we go. Bump it hard. Your fist connects with his. Hard. The slam is audible. You can almost hear his bones ring. Your knuckles tingle, life-affirmingly. And now you, Bina Clard. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses, then extends his curled fist and taps Titus's bruised knuckles. A bond has been formed. Not bad. Nah, I know her. She's just a girl, in over her head. What kind of pro? Y'all saying she's a hooker? No, he's not saying that. Nah, I don't know what the fuck that means, Oranese lit. I've noticed the same. Yes, he meant Oranese literature. Women are all- The lieutenant adjusts his electronic wristwatch. Psychological and physical training from an unknown government body. I noticed it. You noticed it. They haven't. Nah, I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. Handled him? She got into some- Yes, yes, we heard all about it, and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men too are growing increasingly silent. The man is slowing down. Looks like a bad blood sugar crash. He can't keep track of all the variables anymore. Who could? It's getting harder and harder to perform one's part in this sordid play. All it takes is a nudge. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time... You see her, tell her, Titus said, Fuck off! This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. And that lying, scamming, we're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. On the floor, Bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? All we need is some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they will be. Convince Titus he's being manipulated. 
You should know by now. Titus Hardy will never falter. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Outside in the evening light, ruined and old, shadows lengthen on the pavement, a distant gunshot. Huh? He'll get it. Go on. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Bring that up one more time, and you won't get to write that report. The man's fists under the table are bald. You can tell from his neck and shoulders. He means it. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right? Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the Wild North. It wasn't that. It wasn't. We didn't shoot him. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. Firearm. A Glass 08 or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Steal yourself. Push on. Just ignore Theo. We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... Shut up, Angus! Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis, stand down, or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. <sighs> hmm. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Fine. I'll tell him, after a long walk along the coast. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? She's got one of those checkered pasts. The shot could have missed. Could have been meant for her. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Tell you what I'd do. 
Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do if I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. In a manner of speaking, we had help from another girl. It was her idea to hang him, and I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. The big guy turns to Glenn, who's about to say something. The blonde shuts his mouth before a word escapes. I'll say it again. All the Hardy Boys are right here, cop. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her anyway. We're hardy boys, and that's it. Nope, you're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. The lieutenant gives a smile only you can see. Me too. He nods. You hang the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Cause the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls plural? There's another girl? Two of them? Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. That's okay with the fat man. Still wheezing there. He couldn't speak if he wanted to. We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That fucking... Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they'd been fucking? Tibbs patched the window. And the corpse. We hanged. Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Tibbs, that's short for. Yeah, good man. Bet their father's name, Atticus Hardy. Lucretia Hardy would be their sister, anyway. You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. Oh, you meant that kind of training, like a spy. Maybe. The kind of people who are after her, I guess she'd have to be. They're powerful, connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. That's all he knows. 
That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. Suddenly, the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers, circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She, Clausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there is nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. Anti-object task force. Behold, the anti-object task force has assembled. God's avenging angel, arrayed against the lower emanations of the darkened one. Shoe racks, tape recorders, motor carriages, and doors. So many doors. You're not just pounding it all to pieces. You're reforging the universe. From the anvil of the heavens to the worms below. Indulge in it. Be bold. Have an impact on the shape of creation. Out of the furnace of your rage. A new reality. Also, you should trash your room again. Again? I... It's always good to see you. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. I understand. Just like that, no resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. No, it's not good. It's the opposite of that. This will let her dictate the terms of your... Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. Let the miss speak. She's tall and thin and tired. A twig trying so hard not to break. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. You're right. There's more. You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, 
as she's done time and time again. Where the cold oceanic expanse lies, and behind it, another world. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. Just business, but bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Fucked? People after her? Moral intern people? This is an Oranese lit. Here we go. For once, you seem to have her off guard. I did. I also had a side job selling insurance that I was really good at. Got picked up by a bank. Competitive intelligence, they called it. After that, I sort of, uh, transitioned out of the whole culture scene. It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol, or even in Orania. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved, and who hired you. The job was Luz Duen County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scott conglomerate. That was the second job. The first but she really destroyed them. She still feels it. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scott and their friends in the MI. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Lowe's cap. These people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airberg, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. Yeah, Papa fucking Lolo wants to kill me. Sure, I'm not a war criminal, but it was bad. People lost their jobs. Good people, too, not just C-suite. A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. I... One of them killed themselves because of me. She says it quickly, like she said it a hundred times, to herself, to get used to the idea. Out of guilt. How do you deal with anything? It's all just... How do you do it? There you have it, the way of the warrior. Around her, a 
drop in the atmospheric pressure. Not long from now, it will get dark, and the air will start moving faster, circling the box she stands on. She's already in prison here for what happened, and she's prepared to never leave, even after his death. We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. A great pain moves through her. A dark and indefinite wave. She continues in spite of it. I knew he was dead. Before he fell down on top of me. He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream. Then ran downstairs. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Oh. So am I. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Good thinking. Clear your head. You should clear your head. Get into his mindset. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, through the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room. Into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman. Run past them, and out into the streets where it's dark and people move. To the lorries at the intersection, as far as you can. I already ran. I ran from an entire isola. There is. I can't run any further. Not with these people. This is as far as it gets. Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. 
Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation, but I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what he does. It's always good to see something in her demeanor. I understand. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. I knew there was for what it's worth. This is no. Shush. Let the if you knew we were Because of the Hardies. I couldn't just dispense with You're right. You answered. Briefly glancing over a grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon. Wine dark in the evening light. The Pearl, the Buindi Isola, the Occident, and then Aranje, the old, old world. You share a database, just business. What happens if they will kill me? Well, then I'm fucked. Be Here we go. For once, you seem to. I did. After that, I sort of, uh. It's not no What exactly? Industry with a big. I need to. The job was. But she. Asked to who. Lowe's cap. These people engineer financial disaster. Yeah. Baba fucking sure. A lot of that can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. I one of She said out of guilt. How do you deal there you have it? The way of the warrior. We were there, okay. I turned back a great I knew he was dead. Before he was heavy, I pushed him off and he- I waited. She's forgotten about her. Oh. So am I. What time? Eleventh. It's okay. Not as much as- Wait. Talk. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines. Good thing. Did you hear? No. Nothing. He was still- Run, woman. Run. I already ran. Silly. Ruby was there too. Ruby? Ruby. The leader? The hardy boy. Well. Well, she said she- To mislead you. To produce- Yes. We come- About twenty, yes. Ruby went out. It took Ruby maybe- Ruby said- I don't know. We will need to- Interesting. What are you doing? Coming up with a theory. She said Ruby knew something was wrong before she said anything. How come? It was loud downstairs. She couldn't have heard the shot. It is ominous. You- Already coming up with theories that put the blame on someone other than Classia. When he was... The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. I thought they'd found me. 
They've killed so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. I just don't know. I don't know anything. We can't go after Loose Cap. Not yet. There are other, saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. Because I'm an idiot. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. You have to understand, the people around here, no one was making the call and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off and that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched, her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once, just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud, thud, so I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Oh God, that was a lie too. Who made the call then? She did, of course. Last week, Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. Yes, you see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... He's thinking, are we done here? Or should we arrest her? She's a flight risk and she lied to you. She should be taken into custody. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. This guy won't budge. You have to wake Multiface up forcefully if you want to continue pushing her. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Take it easy. Don't overcompensate with this course correction. Ask questions first. Yes, start at the top. Choose at the bottom. It's how we've always done it. No rush. See? There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. This bastion of willpower here, his watchmen have been sleeping too. You can be absolutely certain now, but he's coming around. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Okay, it's not. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Commonser. 
I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. She's not lying now. She really is very tired. Her metabolism is failing her. The afterglow of whatever narcotics she's been taking is wearing off. It's Katarzyna Alazie. It's a Grad name. Jimsk or Yugo Grad in origin. Not occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation and rock music infused alcoholism. It also makes Klazia almost an allochronin for Katarazina Alazia. It was a sentimental thing. I want it to be more me here this time. So I used my nickname. A nickname? Who gave you this nickname, Klazia? A teenage boy, a million years ago. My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. All I remember is Oranie. Alasie is my father's name. Of course, she doesn't look like an Oranese woman at all. She's... I've always had that going for me. I only have the birthmarks of an Oranese woman. That's cool. She doesn't feel like a classier. She feels like nothing. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. Ready for the damage. She knows you're grilling her. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call eight. 102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergencies desk number. Anyone could know that, sire, by looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. What time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late, sometime after 12. It checks out. But I know the time of the call, too. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you, officers. But I am now. She sounds like a sixth grader, apologizing. Clausia. It was my first real boyfriend who gave me that name. He never recovered from the shit we went through because of me. He was a writer. He made Oranis lit. And I destroyed him. I know I'm shit. I know. But I haven't done anything. At least nothing illegal. She purposefully misrepresented information crucial to the case. Fucking mind games. Enough. That's right, gang. Stern and merciless now. Stern and merciless as we reel her in. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Please, no. But there's nowhere to go. A two-story drop to the Plaza Mosaic. If she could, she would have run before. Fragile, unshielded, 
Her voice is thin and tired. I think I know who did it. Who shot Lely. I can tell you. I can help you. She's silent for a second, as if looking into herself for certainty. Then, in a hushed voice, gearing up for this betrayal is hard for her. Ruby. She has this thing for me, ever since I met her and the boys downstairs. She's been pretty frank about what she wants. What she's saying is... Sex. Sex. And more. I made the mistake of confiding in her. I told her I was on the run. She started protecting me. It became an unhealthy relationship. When I started spending time with Lely, she told me to end it. Said there would be shit if I didn't. It was not a good meeting. We stopped talking after that, but... I don't understand. What exactly in your relationship made you think she is romantically interested in you? She said she's in love with me. She even asked me to run away with her when I told her I'm a fugitive. She started developing notions about our relationship. And you led her on? A little. I was flattered, you know. But then I had to let her off, and it was not easy. I came to regret being friendly with her. We maybe kissed, nothing more. This is just an assumption. I know what it sounds like. That's why I didn't want to tell you before. But she knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow, she knew Lely was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When we came up here, she was calm as a stone, too. She cleaned it all up like she had a plan. This is a familiar theory. You had it too, remember? Could it be that Ruby was covering up after herself, the lynching? Yet again, you're coming up with this. The worst thing is, it may be true. She came over one night, drunk, said she'd turn my life into a living hell. I've been threatened before, so I can tell when someone knows how to do it. And she's a pro, she must be, to keep the hardies in line. I tried severing ties with her after that. I thought it had worked, but... Some of that fear is still with her. She exhales sharply. What are you talking about? She's afraid you'll arrest her. You've been through there, right? I saw you come out. It leads downstairs. She could have come to the roof through that, then made the shot right here, where I stand. It was dark outside. I wouldn't have seen her. Then slipped back downstairs without anyone noticing? That is possible. Interesting theory. Did she know that door exists? Had you been out there with her? Yes, of course. She's been up here many times, jacking private stations off the ring antenna. She used to come here to drink on the roof with me, before it got weird. Okay, and what? Arrest the liar now. Why? She told us some pretty interesting things there. She's stuck here. She's already in prison. Look around. She's only trying to help you. Her. Stop letting her distract you. Thank you. Thank you. You won't regret it. 
something tells you, you will. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. As you look back, you think, so love did do him in, after all. If it weren't for her, he would not have been there. The shot would not have connected with his soft palate. She's silent, holding on to her coffee mug. No vapor rises from it. It's cold. It appears this one has not been entirely corrupted. This may help. This may help the others see. Yeah. I'd like to think he didn't love me. Or that it was chemically induced and not real. Easier that way. I don't know. You do not know. A wind of needles. Airships flutter in the stratosphere. Who knows? It's getting cold out. You should go. 